This is the new for 2024 BMW M1000XR, a super spec, super pricey version of their S1000XR sports touring crossover. But is it any good and is it worth the extra 5k over the standard bike? Well I've been lucky enough to borrow this one for the past week or so and so in this video we'll go through my nine key favorite things about it as well as at the end who should think about buying one and maybe who shouldn't. Now perhaps the defining feature of this bike in terms of how they've tried to boost the performance up to a level that's worthy of an M badge is the engine. You see there are two versions of this 999cc BMW inline 4, one that you'll find in the standard S1000XR and the S1000R naked and then this one that you'll also find in the S1000R sports bike. Now the key difference between the two is that this more sporty version gets their shift cam variable valve lift and timing system. That means that instead of having to give it one tune that can do a bit of everything, this one can run on a less aggressive cam profile in the lower revs that emphasizes economy and emissions whilst also being able to instantly flick over to that more aggressive cam profile as the revs climb or the throttle positions more open and that will give you out and out top end performance. Now the standard S1000XR makes an already rapid 170 horsepower peak whereas this one makes a frankly ridiculous 201 horsepower. So look, can you realistically use it all the time on the road? Perhaps not, but it does feel phenomenally quick absolutely effortless and like there's always bags of acceleration in reserve. Then you've also got the spec sheet bragging rights which I think perhaps do become a bit more important when you're paying the best part of £28,000 and there really aren't many other sports tourers that can challenge this level of power. The only one that I can think of is the Kawasaki H2SX but that bike needs a supercharger to get there. Now also adding to the sensation of sportiness with this bike is the soundtrack with that Revy inline 4 Raw that really does give you the feeling that you're riding a sports bike. Now this bike gets an Akropovich carbon tip silencer as standard and while it is homologated so it's never going to be super loud, it does have a very nice note to it and it does seem to pick up in terms of volume as the revs rise. <laughs> One of the factors could be the exhaust control valve which you can spot just behind the rider's foot pegs there and so I guess it probably does open up to make it free of flowing when the bike needs to make more performance. Either way I think it's a great sounding bike and it really is addictive to get it singing and the only downside of that I'd say is that with 200 horsepower on tap on the road at least you do often find yourself having to exercise a bit of self-restraint. Now we'll admit that this is quite a large looking motorcycle but don't be fooled by the dimensions because it really is quite sporty and quick turning out on the road. You do have, after all, the 17 inch wheel up front, you've got Pirelli's super sticky Diablo Rosso Corsa 4s and the whole package tips the scales at just 223 kilograms which I think is pretty impressive for such a large bike and it's actually 4 kilos less than the standard S1000XR. Then on this particular press bike you've also got the M Competition package which is admittedly a another five grand on top of the 22 and a half grand starting price but it does get you some nice goodies like the lap timer, this fancy paint job, some carbon bits and most importantly of all the carbon wheels. You see these shared 1.4 kilograms a pair versus the standard wheels that you get on the normal M1000XR and you've got to remember that shedding weight at the wheel has a dramatic effect on the handling of a bike. Not only does the lower rotating mass give you quicker changes in direction and also quicker acceleration and decelerations but also it's unsprung mass as well so it allows the suspension to more easily do its job. Now I'm not saying these are the only factor because of course the standard M1000XR without them probably handles fantastic as well but they're just another little thing that contributes to this being a really enjoyable bike to ride that feels light-footed, quick to change direction and 100% engaging. 
Now these brakes may look proper bling with the blue anodization and that's because they're BMW's own M brakes which are specific to the M line of bikes and so it's kind of understandable that they wanted them to stand out. But also I should add they really do the trick. With these four piston radially mounted monoblock calipers up front on 320mm discs, I believe these are made by Nissin on BMW's behalf and you've also got a Nissin radial master cylinder up at the lever as well. Then at the rear you've got a single pot caliper on a 220mm disc and combined there's lots of power, plenty of feel and it really is very quick to stop. I think the key with this genre of bikes though, the sports touring crossover, is that it combines that performance biased lower half with the lively engine, the sticky tyres, the lightweight wheels and the sharp brakes with effectively the upper half of like an adventure bike. As a result you've got plenty of wind protection in the cockpit, a big 20 litre tank for plenty of range and also a little bit more travel on the suspension for a bit of a cushy ride. As for the ergonomics though, well the seat height is 850 mil, so nice and tall and that gives you plenty of space down to the pegs to keep the knee angle open so it's nice and comfy even if you're spending quite a while in the saddle and also you get that commanding view of the traffic ahead so really nice for road riding. Then you've got this very natural, wide, comfy handlebar position that keeps your back angle upright and also this adjustable windscreen which gives you just about enough wind protection. Now don't get me wrong, it's never going to compete with something like an R1250RT in terms of distance riding and comfort but if you more so view it through the lens of an exotic performance bike then I think this is probably about as comfy as it gets. On top of that, another thing that makes this bike feel nice and usable for road riding is the suspension with their dynamic ESA electronic system. So you've got a 45mm upside down fork from Marzocchi up front, a monoshock at the rear, and with both of them you can choose a setting through the switchgear and dash to suit the specific scenario that you're riding in. And what I really like about it is that I think you can exaggerate the versatility of this bike with the electronic settings with, for example, you know, a riding mode like dynamic, which is nice and sporty, lots of response from the engine, but then at the same time put the suspension in the road mode, which is a little more cushioned. With those two things at the same time, you've got a very quick but also comfortable bike and it basically feels like a rocket powered armchair, which in my book, is certainly a good thing. In fact, on the tech front, there really is everything that you could ever need on this bike and a little bit more. For example, you've got seven riding modes. So rain, road, dynamic, race, and race pro one, two, and three. And within that, you've got cornering traction control, cornering ABS, a quick shifter, launch control, a pit lane limiter, and more. So you really ought to be able to get it dialed exactly to your preference and abilities. And it's all done through this excellent TFT display and the typical BMW switchgear layout. In fact, with this dash, I really do like the sport layout they've included which gives you the more prominent analog looking rev counter and some fun little stats like maximum lean angle, rate of deceleration and TC intervention. If however you're using this bike more so for the sort of practical side of things then there are plenty of connectivity features like music and phone calls and navigation and so again that's just another example of the balance of like sportiness and practical abilities. In fact if you want to make the most of some of those connectivity features then I'd fully recommend checking out our channel sponsors and also the sponsors of this video and that's Cardo who make in my experience the best comm systems in the business. We specifically use their top of the line pack torque edge which gives you brilliant audio quality courtesy of the JBL design speakers and so yeah if you want to listen to music or take calls, then the Pack Talk Edge gives you excellent sound quality. On top of that, I think they've absolutely nailed the noise gating on their microphone. So if you are using it for calls or as an intercom, then you don't get any distracting background noise or wind noise. But I think the best feature of them all is their second generation dynamic mesh communication system, which allows you to pair with up to 15 riders with a mile between each. Not only that, but with mesh systems, the more people that join, the stronger the connection gets. And also, if someone drops off the group and catches back up, there's no need to stop and pair manually because they'll automatically be seamlessly healed back into the group. 
Genuinely, this is the best headset that I've ever used. And so I thoroughly recommend checking out the links down in the description below, where you'll also find a discount code specifically for our viewers. So once again, a massive thanks to Cardo for their support. Now we've mentioned some of the more performance biased technology on this bike, but there are also some nice bits of standard kit that help to make it a more convenient road bike and also that little bit more practical. Now a big one for me is heated grips, also there's cruise control as standard and you get hill hold control as well to make it easier to move off when you're parked up on an incline. Then you've also got keyless ignition which is tied into the fuel filler cap as well and also the steering lock. And then cornering headlights are also a nice safety touch because they illuminate the inside of a turn for much better visibility of the road when you're riding at night. Then I think you've got to say as well, it really is an impressive looking bike. I mean, maybe the general proportions aren't classically beautiful because of the crossover genre where it is quite a big tall bike, but with fairly small wheels. But within the bounds of what's possible with this format, I think they've made it about as exotic and desirable as possible. This paint job, for example, really does help. I love the black with the M Sport colors. There's the bits of carbon as well that are dotted around the bike and also the winglets, which they do say do give you a bit of downforce, but also, you know, they do add to the looks. And even some of the smaller parts like the billet pack, which comes as part of that M competition package, just give it a sense of quality to the finish, which you'd probably expect for this sort of price. You see, at just under £28,000, you've really got a want one, but I do think that it probably ticks a lot of boxes for a couple of types of customer. One would be someone who's already looking for an S1000XR, but maybe they've got a bit of extra budget and they want something that looks that little bit more special, and I think it certainly does that. The other is if you wanted more of the performance and handling of something like the M1000RR or the M1000R Naked, but perhaps your flexibility doesn't quite allow you to ride those bikes in comfort. And so in that case, this is absolutely the bike for you. The only caveat I'd say is potentially someone who's looking to do more of the touring side of the sports touring spectrum, where I think the standard S1000XR probably does the job that little bit better. It's less expensive, it's a little bit more chilled out, there's still plenty of power, but also it gives you some proper luggage options like the three-piece hard cases. So yeah, if that sounds like you, perhaps go for the standard bike, and it's worth pointing out that you can get a £3,000 M Sport package for that one, which might be the perfect compromise of full touring capabilities, but with some of the looks of this bike. In fact, that's exactly what I'm doing today. I'm here at BMW UK, dropping off the M1000XR and swapping it for the S1000XR with that M pack. So if you wanna see my review of this bike when it goes live, then do hit subscribe. Also, if you wanna see some of our other recommendations for the best sports tourers in 2024, then I'll put it on the screen now so you can give it a click and give it a watch. Do let me know what you think of the M1000XR and which of these you choose. A massive thanks for watching today and we'll see you in the next video.